musky fishing can be a grind. It can be hours of casting and reeling, hours of figure eight after figure eight. But sometimes everything works out and it did today. We got a couple fish in the bag. We're fishing out of Sunset Country Adventures on Edward Lake. And we got to show Jamie's wife, Michaela, that muskies are for real. Put your hand under your tail. There you go. He stinks. He stinks. Has, uh, I think that's where Mike Richard has his cabin. Oh, yeah. So just yeah. outside of there. Um, there's a big green jug in the water. Oh, got a little guy. Who's he? Oh, sorry, sweetheart. Oh, a musky, a little musky. Hey, guys, Glenn McDonald, 54 bust. I'm out here with Jamie, his daughter, <laughs> and his wife. We were on our first spot and you had said you were going to buy a growler just off of watching a video of ours. 100%, yeah. So Thatcher and Jody, he picked up a growler and we got oh, another gosh, one. Oh, we're on our first mama. spot. It's a small one. Shh. It's not real big, but hey, it's a musky. <laughs> Musky's a musky. On yeah, the first spot. <laughs> so first spot of the day, little musky. It's like a 30 incher, but <laughs> you know what? It was right in the weeds. And, oh, he's all beat up on the bath. Let's see the other side. And what that is, is actually a bacterial infection. It's harmless to the fish. It just, just looks worse than it is. Yeah, I want to let him get back in. He's ready to go. There he goes. All right, we got one for the day to start. There he goes. No? Yeah, he's good. There he goes. All right, so first spot, got one little one. We still have some more to cover here. So we'll keep doing that and we'll be back right away. Good job, Jamie. Thanks, buddy. Welcome back everybody to today's 54 second breakdowns. And today, kind of a cool day Jamie's wife and daughter had never seen a muskie up close. Jamie's caught a few, but his wife had always said, it looks like you guys Photoshop all your pictures, which we all know that sometimes we just chase these fish and they're so hard to catch that they're like unicorns. And that's what Jamie's wife, Michaela, was saying. They're like unicorns. You just never see them. So on today's trip, our very first spot, Jamie gets a small one. I've seen some bigger fish in this area, but because I've been in here a couple times, I actually learned something that I was able to apply to today's trip. So on my first couple trips into this area this year, the weeds were growing out to this six foot area. And this is just classic sand beach on the shield. We have some isolated rocks along shore in that two to three, four foot depth range. And then these red marks here are signaling sunken timber which we don't see a lot of muskies around sunken timber, but they will hold there. But my first trip, the weeds only came out to about six feet. When I was here a few weeks back, I started to see kind of a little corner develop and some weeds coming out into the nine foot area. And I actually put a waypoint on my boat at this outside corner and that outside corner. And those actually proved key on this trip. I come in with my boat purposely trying to stay out on this nine foot area because I wanted to be able to hit this inside corner here but I also wanted to be able to hit that whole outer edge so as I got close to my waypoint I actually rolled the boat out about here Jamie cast and that fish come right off that outside edge of the nine foot deep weed line and had I approached that the same as I did a few weeks back, I would have been sitting at six feet and I would have drove the boat right over top of those weeds. That's a common mistake that a lot of guys do. They keep fishing the spot the same every single time and they don't take into account that over the course of the summer, each spot's going to change. So just being able to adapt to 
The way things are changing throughout the summer helped us score this first little fish. Well, it's not a big one. It was the first one for the night, and Michaela actually got to see that muskies are for real. Okay guys, it's been been a pretty good grind. We had some action on a bigger fish. We're kind of wrapping up our day. Like Jamie said, we're kind of in the witching hour. And I put on the brand new jointed dipstick. I'm not gonna dig this out because this fish is pretty green, but there it is right there from Top Line Baits. So I'm gonna give the camera to Jamie's wife and his daughter's gonna come up and get in the picture with us. Okay guys, for fish number two, I actually changed this up because I think there's a couple really key points here. Rather than show you the lake from the top, I wanted to show you kind of a 2D. So we have the shoreline over here. And what we have is a rubble rock shoreline that breaks down to about four feet on the big rocks and then down to about eight feet on the smaller cobble. And then there's a pretty steep drop. of This is mostly bedrock. And then right here, it meets sand at the bottom. So there's two distinct edges here. And guys like Steve Herbeck talk about using edges all the time. I take no credit. But this edge right here, that's an edge. And then this edge right here, that's also another edge that muskies will hold up on. So if the muskies are not up in the shallow rocks, if they're going to suspend off of these big boulders, I would suspect that they're going to be over this break line. Or if they're on the smaller cobble, they're going to be sitting over that break line. And it's a common mistake I see a lot of guys do when they come to Canada. Because from right here, if we had our boat sitting here, this is about a casting distance to shore for most people. So most people that come up here, they want to sit a casting distance, give or take, from shore. And in a lot of cases in Canada, you're sitting on top of the fish. So that doesn't work. So today, because I had seen fish on this point in the past, I purposely kept our boat sitting way over here. I'm out over 20 feet of water. And now we're casting not quite up to the rocks. Actually, I was almost hitting shore with the jerk bait I was using, but we're able to get up onto these rocks here and then pull through and we're able to encounter these fish that are using these edges. And that's just key. You see it so often and you hear guys talk about cast the Canadian side of the boat. That's because a lot of guys sit right here and you're casting the shallows and you never get to target these fish sitting in deeper water. So that's a valuable lesson that we've learned. We've kind of adopted this two or three years ago. We always sit back. You can always move in on a fish, but when you sit right on top of fish, it's hard to move out and get those fish to engage. Just go. Just go. Stand up by your dad. Yeah. Put it down. <laughs> Put your hand right under his tail. <laughs> okay, smile at the camera. Look at your mom. Look at your mom. <laughs> All Good right, job. so there you go. That's a little guy on the dipstick. We're going to get this one back and we're going to see if we can't get at least one more here to finish our night. There we go. Get what do you in. think, sweetie? You want to give him a kiss? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, wow. Uh oh. There he goes. There he goes. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
bite me because he's dipstick. Another one on the dipstick. <laughs> okay, guys, so. Don't put him too close to me. <laughs> <laughs> we got an excited little girl down here. So I just put that one back. We come in, we're around an island complex. And I told Jamie that I like this side because of all the rocks coming off. And again, the dipstick got hit way out from the boat. This is a bigger fish. This is probably low to mid 42 ish. We'll leave it. We'll give it a quick bump here and have a look. Fish number three, absolute classic Canadian shield island rock complex. See these all over the shield lakes up here. The deep side of it's 25 feet deep. Deep, deep break line on what would be kind of the southeast side. Don't see a lot of fish here in the summer. Fall time, we will see some fish. But the key to this spot is obviously these rocks that are kind of hanging off the western side of it. There's a little bit of cabbage in the back here. So we worked our boat around it. I'll use red. We worked around and we are kind of contacting all these areas trying to hit the weeds here because I was thinking that fish would be holding in these shallow weeds in that three to four, five foot range. We didn't see anything there. And I actually told Jamie that I said, if we get down here, I'm going to be throwing my twitch bait into the rocks. And I was actually contacting all these rocks underwater here two or three times. Jamie was casting a spinner bait, I believe, off the just the outer edge. I actually hit some rocks here and I had to let, let it kind of suspend up. I get it one pull and I got hit way out from the boat. The key with this spot is that in years past, this whole area, this whole flat out here between four and eight feet, this all used to have weeds in it. But the weeds are just not there anymore. Whether Rusty Craze got them, a little bit of climate change, Hot summers, long winters, I don't know the exact reason, but we see this a lot on shield lakes. Weeds that are there one year may start to dissipate over the course of a couple of years. So fish are going to hold to available structure. So in this case, I honestly thought we'd see some fish holding in this small patch of weeds here. There wasn't one there. And if it's not there, they're going to be sitting in these rocks and in this case, I would suspect that most fish are going to be looking out to the bigger water. So a fish is going to be sitting in here with his face out. We cast the bait over him and pull it back into the fish. Hit the rock a couple times. Comes up in front of that fish's face and he grabs it. And we get the third of the night. But that's just classic shield fishing right there. So hopefully you guys like this fish. Okay, we're going to actually bump this one, which is something I don't do a lot, but it's a decent fish, and because these guys haven't seen a lot of big fish, we'll bump this one. It's a pretty nice fish, just the same. Oh, uh. Come on, girl. Hey. Just angry. <laughs> All right, we'll give her a bump. Forty and a half, forty and three quarters. Thick fish, though. <laughs> Put your hand on the, the tail. There you go. He stinks. He stinks. Yeah, yeah look Look at here. your dad. Perfect. Beautiful fish. You got awesome pictures too. Yes. Awesome. All right, He's we'll get this so one back. Slimy. They are very slimy. Sure. So he's got to hold the tail, make sure that's ready to go to you. You want to come and hold him with me? Want to hold no. his tail, pal? No. Sure. No, thank you. Mama, do you want to hold the tail and get him ready to go back in the water? No, I'm okay. You sure? Yeah. Mommy's scared of him, that's all. There, he's upright, getting Try his bearings. Try and catch another one. All right, bye, girl. Good job. Okay. Good job, Slimy. <laughs> All right, guys, so that's number three of the day. We're going to hit one more spot just to wrap it up, but been an absolute fun day, even though it was a bit of a grind. You know what? you got to take those grinds and just know that it'll happen. So let's finish this one off strong, and we'll catch you guys for a wrap here in a bit. 
Okay, guys, that's a wrap. Sunset. sunset. Let's try that again. That's a blooper right there. Okay. <laughs> Okay guys, that's a wrap. Sunset Country Adventures, Indian Lake Chain. We're on Edward Lake. Definitely check them out. I'll put a link in the description below. Awesome spot. Tons of people stay here that I know. Always have a good time. Jamie and his wife and his daughter are here. We had a super fun day today. We ended up with three. And if you guys wanna see some of the lures that we like to use on the Indian Lake Chain, check out the link right here. And until next time, 54 Bust is out of here. We'll catch you guys out on the water later.